fixed, I, I think it attracts all sorts of investors. I'm not so sure if, it depends on what you call traditional fixed income players. If you would say institutional investors like pension funds and, uh, and the like, yes, but only to a smaller uh, extent. I think at least talking to, to our clients, I mean, I showed at the last slide some, some disparity between, between corporate bonds and senior debt. And there's, there's much more disparity. And if you can get 15, 20% on mezzanine, and you get a few percent on, uh, on equity, where, where would you go? Uh, so I think there's a disparity at this moment between debt, debt and equity, and that's why people say, well, if I only get a few percentage on my equity and I face all those significant risks, why shouldn't I be in mezzanine or in senior debt? And I think that attracts all sorts of investors. And yes, the fixed income players are there, but they're all, all the traditional, say, real estate investors are looking to debt funds as a serious alternative. And to a certain extent, that has to do a little bit with disparity, with arbitration, looking for the best time, you call risk return. I mean, yeah, 20% uh, on mezzanine and still less risk, quote unquote, in equity, where would you go? And are you, are you finding people coming into your debt funds that are maybe traditional bond investors? Are you seeing that or? I think it, uh, it really depends on the, the kind of debt you're targeting. Uh, if you look at the senior loans, uh, which is the strategy of our first fund, you're talking to fixed income investors. And they will, uh, they will look at it with the premium I described. So uh, getting 150 to 300 basis points more, they're happy with that. If you look at the uh, eastern part of the risk curve, so uh, moving to mezzanine, preferred equity financing, most of the time you will talk to real estate investors. Uh, and it's a completely, uh, completely different story. So it really depends on the strategy of, uh, of your fund, knowing that when you launch a fund, you need to be focused on something because investors have to, uh, have to understand exactly the kind of strategies they are entering. So, so far we have discussed with uh, bond and fixed income investors, but we may move soon to uh, other kind of strategies. Okay, good. Um, uh, Jan Evert, um, just to, just in perhaps just on that, Christian, because yeah. uh, I would like I would think that the traditional fixed income investors would would uh, have some sort of a, an investment statute that prescribes that they have to invest in rated paper, um, and and clearly bank loans are not externally rated. How do you cross that bridge with them? In fact, it's a question of um, treatment within their uh, regulation, their solvency uh, rules. So they will not put it in the same pockets, but they are entitled to do that. The only constraint that they have is that they, they can invest less than in rated uh, loans. But they, uh, they can invest in, uh, in loans, especially considering that the loans we are talking about are secured by uh, mortgage. And I guess, I mean, that's, that's the other part of, of perhaps my first uh, uh, remark, that wh where are the investors, uh, where are the institutional lenders? Uh, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the whole of the Solvency II regulation has not completely panned out yet in terms of, okay, we'll take a long-term strategy as, a, as an insurer uh, to benefit from that new regulation and, 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 and deploy these funds. So I guess that's a, a, an additional remark on the first one of the first questions there, Richard. So your sense is that this hasn't necessarily played out, and, no. it, and it may well be that, yes, you've got insurers coming into the market now because the market appears to be good for them, but if Solvency 2 changes in a different route, that advantage may disappear. Yeah. No, I guess um, watch this space should be the answer. Um, I hope it's near. Well, then, Richard, just, just one point. I'm, I'm still not totally convinced about Solvency 2 uh, here. Um, it may be true for listed equity, and that gets a 49% uh, hit. But if you talk to insurance companies, well, firstly, they would say, only a couple of percentage of my investments is in real estate, three, four, five percent, that's about it. I don't care. Secondly, direct real estate gets a 25% hit. And bonds, even highly rated, gets 18, 20%, and, and, and funds maybe even more. So I don't think the insurance companies step into that because of solvency too. And if already true, 
that's only one of the reasons. The primary reason, again, is the attractive margins. And secondly, they really look for matching of their long-term provisions. So they look for long-term investments which match those provisions. So that matching and the higher margins is the first reason. And solvency too plays a role, but not that significantly as many people think.